Welcome. Welcome in. How's everybody doing? Go ahead and drop your location in the chat. It's our like pre-class roll call. We like to see where everybody's taking class from. Also, um, could you drop in the chat if you're going to be making ghee with us this evening? Helps us know if we're going at a good pace. <laughs> nice. Oops, I wrote unneeded. It's supposed it auto corrected. It was supposed to be unseated. <laughs> Massachusetts. California, Alberta. Dang, Australia. What's up, Melbourne? Yeah, welcome. Anybody cooking with us tonight? Or I guess making, making ghee? It's kind of like cooking, right? It is cooking. Yeah, you're cooking it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it will be very simple to follow along and execute on your own. Like this is any, anybody and everybody can do it. And okay. the list of things that you need is very short. I think it was just four things, a heavy bottom pot, a fine mesh strainer. I said, and, or a cheesecloth. It just helps for straining out more. A measuring cup. Yes, feel free to show your beautiful faces. We are You're recording, welcome. but you are not on the recording. It's only the person who is spotlighted. So, oh yeah, in a glass jar. So that feel was fine. free. Makes us feel a little bit more connected. Yeah, if you don't want to have it on the whole time, I understand. Um, feel, keep dropping your locations. Anybody, it doesn't seem like anybody's making ghee. It looks like a lot of people are observing and going to yeah. make later. Is there anybody at all that's going to make it with us this evening? This evening in California? I don't know. Some of you guys are, I don't know. What time is it in Australia? It's like tomorrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are like way ahead of us in the future. Oh, middle of the work day. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's not evening. <laughs> London. Welcome. Nicola. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And I'll keep letting people in. <coughs> so, hello. Uh, my name is Jamie Mack, and I am in charge of marketing, and I'm the content specialist for Banyan Tree Women's Collective, which is still considered a newly formed nonprofit. Um, we've been around for a little over a year now, and we are located in the San Francisco Bay Area Peninsula in Menlo Park, technically. And we believe that health is a human right and that you should all have access to really good health resources to make informed decisions on your own health. So tonight we are going to learn how to make ghee and the benefits of ghee with Chantal. So I'm going to send it over to her so that she can get you guys started and don't forget to announce the giveaway, okay? All right, yes, thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> So hi everyone, thank you so much for joining during your evening or your busy work day. Um, I am Chantal, I have a private practice where I work with people one-on-one -on -one to do nutrition counseling and Ayurvedic health counseling. Um, and so in the spirit of celebrating Ayurveda, um, we're gonna learn how to make ghee and ghee has been used for thousands of years with um, Ayurvedic doctors, and it has really amazing nourishing qualities to it. Um, and so you can cook with it just like you do butter. Um, and one thing that it's, it's used with is carrying herbs and spices to help 
penetrate all of our organs and tissues. So the giveaway is for my new Digest Ease Spice Blend. So oh, I feel a tickle in my nose. Um, forgive me, disclaimer, before class started, I was like having an intense allergy, like, I don't know, sneezing bout. So if that happens, I'm so sorry. Um, but this is my Digest Ease Spice Blend. Um, the Spice Blend includes turmeric, powder, um, fennel seeds, coriander seeds, cumin seeds, um, ginger, and these spices are really great for having a healthy, strong digestion. And that's really, really crucial and important in Ayurveda because Ayurveda, um, <clears throat> says that the root of all disease starts with digestion. So if our digestion is weak or poor, then we aren't able to take in and assimilate all of the nutrients that we are consuming. So if we can't assimilate them and they can't go where they need to go, then we start to have a buildup of toxins. And um, over time, this will turn into an excess and build up and then essentially turn into a various types of disease, depending on like what level you're at um, <clears throat> of the excess amount of toxins or AMA in Ayurveda. So yeah, the spice blend is really great and easy to cook with. You can throw it in kitchery, soups, stews. I'll sprinkle it, sprinkle it onto um, vegetables when I'm gonna roast them. Um, so yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can also use it for like uh, curries too. So it's a nice little spice blend and yeah, it's really easy, really easy to use. And it's great when you cook spices in ghee first, because it helps like open up all of the oils and things that are in, in the spices. So here you go. So real quick, we're going to be um, giving away one of those. And at the end of class to um, those who attend the full class, so I'm going to put your names in like a little wheel and we're going to do a fun little drawing at the end. Okay. So stick it out with us. Yeah. Okay. So um, I just first want to talk a little bit about ghee. I know since I don't, I don't think anybody is making ghee with me today. Um, but so ghee is essentially clarified butter. And so it's clarified butter and we essentially cook off the water. So many people don't know that butter inherently like has some water to it. So the water will evaporate off and the milk solids end up cooking out. So they don't evaporate. They end up um, being part of the foam that we'll see on the top of a pot and also the milk solids will sink to the bottom of the pot and kind of start browning. Um, and we do the straining process so that all the bits that are in the foam that are on the surface get strained out and all of the milk solids um, that have sunk into the bottom stay essentially attached to the pot. So because of this, ghee is actually pretty tolerable for people who have um, dairy intolerances and problems digesting dairy. So there are many brands out there on the market that, um, you know, they actually put their ghee through testing and they have labs that test for like the parts per million of um, casein, which is the milk protein. Um, so if you're very, very dairy sensitive and you need a specific brand that tests for the milk solids, um, you can always look that up. But if you otherwise don't really have a large sensitivity to dairy, and even if it's just a little one, then I would say you should be feeling perfectly safe and fine to make ghee at home and consume it because we're going to strain it out and cook things off. So, um, yeah. But ghee is really packed with a lot of nutrients. Um, it's packed with small chain fatty acids, butyric acid, which is really great for your colon and your um, gut health. Um, 
And traditionally, ghee is made by churning your own butter at home first. So we're kind of taking a shortcut because we're not churning butter and then turning the butter into ghee. I did just go to Costco and buy some butter. So you can do the same. Um, and I would recommend, I recommend Kerrygold because it's really easy to find, like generally wherever you are. I think if you're in Australia, I don't, I mean, you know, this is a, um, this is a Irish brand, Kerrygold. Um, if you're in Australia, then perhaps look for Anchor. Anchor is from uh, New Zealand, and that is a really great brand of, of dairy products in general, and their, their butter is really great too. But um, traditionally, ghee is made from cultured butter. And if you can't find cultured butter, then I would look for butter that at least says that it's from grass fed cows. I don't know if you can see that on the label, really, really tiny, um, made from grass fed cows or pasture raised cows, which are essentially synonymous. So there's that. And then we also wanna make sure that we're making ghee with unsalted butter. <coughs> Excuse me. If you really like salt, then you can feel free to add salt to your ghee after you've cooked it. Um, and the reason why I say this is because the salt can impact the cooking. Um, so it's best to kind of just do it from like the most pure form, which is just unsalted. There's nothing in here, just like the fat and the water um, in the butter. So all right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So to make ghee, um, this, this butter is just straight out of the refrigerator. So you don't need to chop it up, but obviously chopping it up is going to help it cook faster. And the thing that you need to cook it in is a nice heavy bottomed pot. So you want a heavy bottomed pot because you don't want it to burn. And it's very easy to burn. So we will be cooking our butter to make ghee over a nice low to low medium heat. Um, depending on how much you are making will dictate, um, you know, how large of a pot that you need. But this is, four sticks of butter that I have here that I'm gonna chop up. Um, and we're just gonna get this into the pot and the heavy bottom pot is great, as I said, because we don't wanna burn it, right? So I'm just gonna, I'm going to turn it on medium right now just to get the melting started. And it usually takes about five minutes for the refrigerated butter to just melt all the way through. Chantal, you have a few questions in the chat. Do you want to wait or do you want to? Um, you can go ahead and read them for me while I'm doing this. That would be great. Um, are you able to give the recipe to the digest spice or are you? Yes. Like later? Or... You mean like the ingredients that are in the spice blend? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. I can put those in the chat. Um, and then. Um, how is ghee used in Ayurvedic meds? So ghee is used on its own and also in as like a carrier of herbs. And so when I say as a carrier of herbs, if you work with an Ayurvedic practitioner, you will have, um, depending on your condition, but you might actually be prescribed a medicated ghee. So um, like specific herbs in their powdered form can be cooked with the ghee and that's how it's taken. So earlier I mentioned how ghee is a really great carrier of medicine and it really carries these medicines and all their properties deep into our tissue. So it's very deeply penetrating. And so it gets used as a carrier of medicine. So you can have medicated ghee. You can also take ghee um 
on its own and you can stir ghee into like your already cooked foods. So you don't even need to specifically cook everything in ghee. Like you can cook your food and then like if you made a bowl of porridge or oatmeal, then you can just put like a teaspoon of ghee on top and stir it into warm food and let it penetrate your food that way. And you can eat it in that manner. Um, but yeah, so you can have medicated ghees or you can take ghee um, like with your cooked foods that might have some specific herbs and spices that you know are necessary for whatever conditions you're struggling with. Um, on a general level, ghee is tridoshic. So that means it's good for all three Ayurvedic constitutions. So for those of you unfamiliar with Ayurveda, it is the traditional medical science from India. And it's based on the principles that there are five elements that make up everything in nature. And that also includes us. So these five elements will come in pairs and make like we have all five elements within us, but there are typically two that form a dosha or an Ayurvedic constitution or body type or mind type, but you'll hear this word dosha. Um, and there's going to be two primary elements that make up each of these doshas. So somebody who is vata dosha is going to have more air and ether elements within their body and their mind. Um, somebody who is of the pitta dosha is going to have primarily fire and a little bit of water. And then somebody who is of the kappa dosha has mostly earth and water. So you see that there are two elements that predominate each dosha. And so in Ayurveda, ghee is actually good for all three, but will have a tendency to increase kapha. So there isn't really a time where I would say like, don't, don't um, consume ghee unless you are greatly suffering from kapha imbalances. And that might look like somebody who has very high cholesterol is beyond overweight and, you know, verging on obese. Um, these heavier qualities of kappa are going to be exacerbated by an overconsumption of ghee, like a teaspoon a day, a tablespoon a day, like split through your meals for kappa shouldn't be an issue. But if you're you know, eating it in larger quantities and you're already suffering from kapha imbalances, it will increase those, those issues because in Ayurveda, like increases like, um, and opposites bring balance. So, um, it is a heavier, very nourishing food. Um, and so therefore it will like, you know, heavy with heavy is just going to make you heavier. <laughs> okay. So I just want to There's bring my more laptop. questions. Let me know if you want me to keep going. Or okay, hang on just a second life. because I want to show you guys what's happening in the pot and see if you can hear this. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So there's a bit of a foam that's starting to form at the top very lightly. Can you hear that? Can you guys hear the crackling? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so this white foam is the first stage of this ghee making process. So this thicker white foam is gonna form on the top and there's gonna be a little bit of this bubbling crackling noise. And that's actually the water that is bubbling to the surface and working its way out to evaporate off. Um, so this is perfectly normal. And that's exactly what we want. In ghee making, it's pretty easy but you just don't wanna walk away from it because it does go through these different phases. So like this thicker kind of creamy um, 
foam with very tiny bubbles is like phase one. Um, and you don't need to stir it. All we're going to do is use like our spoon to kind of push some of the foamy layer to the side so we can begin to see the color of the ghee, um, the clarification process, and what's happening at the bottom. Because remember, we don't want things to burn. And all the milk solids are what's going to be sinking to the bottom. And if those burn, like if they're like really brown, then your ghee is just going to be really bitter and disgusting. So. Yeah. Okay. You had other questions? Yeah. Is uh, did you start the butter at room temp before you put oh, it? Oh, you don't have to. Mine came out of the refrigerator. So if it comes straight out of the fridge to help like cook it a little bit faster, just chop it into cubes like I did. Um, but even straight out of the fridge, you know, straight out of the fridge, I would say like it's going to take five to six minutes for it to like start melting. The whole process usually is like about 20 minutes. Are you melting so it on, on low heat? I'm melting mine on low heat because this burner on the front has a larger flame. Um, I think if I was on my back burner, then I would maybe do medium low. So you kind of have to, you know, my pot is smaller and the flame is larger. Like it's about the same diameter as my pot. So mine's on low right now. And you can always go low and slow because that way, you'd run lesser of a risk of burning it, right? But if you go too hot, you can't, you know, undo if it was too hot and you burn something. How long does ghee last in its best form? So ghee is actually um, shelf stable. You will prolong its life um, if you put it in the refrigerator, but it is not necessary because we're we're straining out the milk solids, the things that would like go bad. And also the water is, is evaporating off, which is another thing that would like, you know, cause mold growth or something. So, um, yeah, essentially like months and months, like years, I mean, you're probably not going to make so much that you can't eat it in a year, to be honest. <laughs> um, if you don't feel like you eat that much butter, then maybe just only do two sticks instead of four. But I would say like this, these four sticks of butter, um, I'll probably, I'd probably eat like one jar a month, but I am eating it like with every meal, like I'm cooking it with everything. I put it in my matcha. I don't drink coffee. So I put it in my matcha or if I make some like ashwagandha latte or when I make my golden bliss, um, which is like golden milk, um, I put it in there. All right, so I'm gonna bring you guys back over here. Sorry, this is how technology goes. Me holding my laptop and hopefully you guys can see that. I don't think that light did anything. So I'm just going to push this aside. So it's not totally transparent and I don't really see a ton of milk solids on the bottom quite yet. So this is still good. You see how the bubbles are a bit bigger now? Before it was like really tiny bubbles along the edge. So now we're getting, you know, closer to, to phase two, but we'll see this kind of like creamy foam layer um, change as the bubbles continue to, to keep going. Let me know when you want more questions. We got a few. Um, yeah, go for it. Um, so how do you know which dosha you are? Ooh, that sounds like yeah. a, a, a good opportunity for your class. <laughs> yes. So I'm actually going to be teaching, um, my like intro to Ayurveda class that I call approachable Ayurveda, um, on December 1st. Um, and that's going to be a really good way for you to kind of like understand what Ayurveda is and begin to hear about the physical structure and the like mental and emotional, uh, components that will help you understand what dosha you are. Um, there are quizzes online. I can't vouch really for like any of them, although 
Banyan Botanicals, not associated to Banyan Tree Women's Collective, but banyanbotanicals.com is a pretty good like Ayurvedic resource. And I believe they have a quiz. Um, I haven't taken it because, you know, I studied Ayurveda and went through a much longer process to, to help me determine my dosha. But um, when you work with an Ayurvedic practitioner, there are going to be questions that we ask um, that comprise of your your physical structure. So it's like your hair, is it typically like, is it thin, dry? Um, is it naturally really like thick, oily? Um, same thing with your skin, same thing with like the shape of your palms, the shape and physical description of your fingers, your entire like physical build. Um, so there's a lot of physical things that we take into account when we, or things that we assess to determine your dosha. But one thing that I find um, the online quizzes typically are asking you questions that point to your vikruti. So there are two things to understand in Ayurveda. There's your prakruti and your vikruti. And your prakruti is essentially your birth constitution, like your natural state of balance and your vikruti is you out of balance. So when you work with an Ayurvedic practitioner, I would ask you questions that you could answer, um, you know, most of my life, X, Y, Z. So most of my life, my sleep has been really great. I fall asleep really easily, but it's really hard for me to get up. However, in the last, whatever, year, three months, your short-term answer might be, uh, for the last six months, you know, it's actually been really hard for me to fall asleep and I like wake up really easily and I wake up in the middle of the night. So there's two different things going on and people are really dynamic. So we want to assess everything um, because when you work with an Ayurvedic health counselor or practitioner, they are going to find out your prakruti, your natural state of balance. They will assess your current imbalances. And what we're trying to do is bring you back to your natural state. Um, and I don't really feel like quizzes capture the essence of your prakruti and your vikruti. I feel like they end up telling you one or the other. So that's a little tricky. Okay, um, to answer the question about what is in my Digest Ease spice blend, it's made of cumin seeds, coriander seeds. I misspoke earlier. I said fennel seeds, but it's fennel seed powder, turmeric powder, ginger powder, and black pepper. So the black pepper is in there because the piperine um, is the... Um, component in black pepper that makes curcumin, which is the active compound in turmeric, more absorbable. So this is all uh, herbs or spices, I guess you call them all spices, um, and no salt. So there's no added salt here, um, just, just a bunch of spices. Let me know when you want more questions. Okay, you can go ahead and ask me more. Okay. Let's see. Where were we? Um, does ghee increase cholesterol in humans, in the human body? So ghee is made from and is a saturated fat. So if you're curious to learn more about fats and you're local, I'm teaching a class on healthy fats next Saturday in Menlo Park. But um, so eating an excess of saturated fats can increase your weight and impact cholesterol. Um, but honestly, like eating healthy fats will make you healthy and function properly and optimally. It's really the fake sugars and um and like trans fats or fake fats that we need to look out for. So this 
may increase your weight, but isn't going to be a direct correlation to increasing your cholesterol, especially if you are choosing um, high quality butter. Okay, so you can't make ghee from like earth balance vegan spread. Like it needs to be butter from cows and you wanna choose either a cultured butter or something from a grass fed or pasture raised cow. Okay, I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see this. I'm going to try to show you anyways in hopes that you can, but in here, it's probably very hard to see. There is now milk solids at the bottom of the pot. So I can see that milk solids have sunken to the bottom. They're not brown yet. I can't see all the way through because it's not totally translucent. And that's how I know that we need it to cook a little bit longer. Um, so I'm gonna let that keep going. But again, the bubbles are bigger and it's really crackling a lot. Um, so that's good. It's going in the right direction and I haven't burnt anything yet. So we're still, we're still doing good. All right, you can hit me with some more questions. If there are any. There are, yeah, I was just uh, typing. Okay, here we go. Let me find them again. Uh, is ghee used for baking, for example, muffins? Yeah, you can totally bake with muffin, or sorry, bake with ghee. You can use ghee wherever you would use butter. Um, it does have a slightly, uh, I'm going to say nuttier taste, but really it just has its own flavor. I'll say nutty for lack of another description or adjective to describe the flavor of ghee. It does taste a lot cleaner um, and obviously not as like milky. It's very rich. So some people really love the flavor of ghee. I do, obviously. Um, but you might not, I mean, hopefully you do, but you know, maybe you wanna taste ghee before you make a whole batch because it does not taste exactly like butter. So I would say it'll probably change or impact whatever it is that you're baking with. Um, and I will also have this disclaimer that I am not a baker and because baking is so highly uh, like chemistry driven, there may or may not be an impact to using ghee versus butter because butter inherently has water. And actually, I know that using butter from like American cows versus like cows from New Zealand or Europe <clears throat> is different. So maybe you wanna Google that. I've heard that you can, but I don't wanna be the one to say that you can and then you make muffins and they, you know, they fall flat or something weird happens. And I don't know. So is cooking ghee with ghee every day. Okay. Instead of using olive oil. Yes, you can totally use ghee in a variety of cooking um, methods. And ghee is really great because it has a really high smoke point. So when you're sauteing, um, or you're roasting or really like anything. The smoke point is between like 450 to 485. So really great for, uh, roasting. Whereas like olive oil, if you drizzle olive oil onto vegetables or something and you roast it, you know, olive oil, I would say is really great for not cooking with, even though a lot of people cook with it. It's like, a light saute that's like quick and not like long, heavy cooking is probably best. Um, but yeah, ghee, you can use for anything that you would use a cooking oil or, or butter with. And because it's a saturated fat, it will solidify at room temperature. So you can keep it in the cat on the counter and it'll just be like solid, you know, depending on the temperature of your home. If you have a really cold winter and it's freezing inside your house, it'll be, it'll stay solid. Um, 
but if it's very warm and you live in a tropical place, it might kind of be somewhere in between like a melted looking butter, like half melted and half solid, but it is a saturated fat. So typically more solid at room temp. And it does inherently have a little bit of a grainy texture. So that's totally normal if you make ghee and there's a little bit of a grit, kind of like salt crystals and hard cheese, um, you didn't make it wrong. There's actually people that I've seen that will add some water in towards the end of the cooking process to like increase this like grainy, gritty um, mouthfeel. I don't, I feel like, you know, how it turns out is normally good enough. All right, I'm just scooting over the foam to check out the milk solids. Okay, the bubbles are much like bigger. They're kind of more like almost looking like a rolling boil, if you will. I don't know how much different this is gonna look to, to you guys. I need to look in the screen to see what you guys can see. Can you guys hear that? Oh, it smells so good. It smells like what they should be pumping out at the movie theater, you know, but I don't know what they, I don't know what they pump out at the movie theater. It's definitely not real butter, but this, it just, it smells so rich, you know, it just, mm, and there's no, there's no salt in here. It smells amazing. Okay. I would say it's probably been about 20, maybe 25 minutes. I didn't put a timer because I just kind of like watch it. So I can see that the bottom, the milk solids at the bottom are not, we want them to be like a golden, like a light brown golden. We don't really want them too brown because if they get brown, they, they burn, right? Um, all right, I'm gonna let my mom in. <laughs> oh, thank you, I didn't see her waiting. I was working on the names. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay. Already. Um, okay, are there any more questions? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn. There's a, a lot of interest on your spices. <laughs> okay. Um, are you selling this? Yes, I am. Okay. My website is live, woo! <laughs> yeah, so, um, and there are questions, like people want the recipe, like the amounts, is it? Um, but are you willing to give that away? I understand if you're, you know, selling it, then you don't always want to give away your secret. Oh, like the exact like ratios. <laughs> I mean, I can, the way I have the ingredients listed is as a food manufacturer would. And by that, I mean, the largest percentage is listed first and the tiniest percentage is listed least. Um, let me see if I can pull up my website. Like one of the questions was asking if the spices are fried or if they're raw. No, they're raw. You want to cook with them. And that's exactly why I am doing this giveaway, like with this class, because when you're cooking with spices, you can warm up some ghee in the pan, put your spices in the pan after the ghee has melted, and then you lightly cook and saute the spices um, and then you can throw in like your veg or whatever you're cooking. Um, if you guys, yes, all, they are, they are raw. If you all subscribed to, um, I think getting like emails through Eventbrite or whatever, you'll get a thank you from us after this class, which will give you Chantal's contact. So maybe that would be a great way to connect with her and maybe talk about either purchasing her spices and supporting, um, or if, you know, yeah, you know, maybe getting the 
some other info from her. Yeah, there's there's the uh, list of all the spices. All right, so the bubbles are getting bigger and the foam is starting to separate more, which is exactly what I wanna see. I turned up the heat a little bit. I was going a little cautious cause I don't wanna burn it. So I have bigger bubbles now and the foam is like separating. Um, and I'm gonna let that go for maybe like three minutes. And then after that, I'm gonna turn off the heat. And so I don't know if we'll get through all this together in this class, um, but I will turn off the heat and then I will let the uh, ghee cool a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, strain it through this fine mesh strainer, which I also additionally have lined with some cheesecloth. If you only have a fine mesh strainer, that is totally fine. If you have two fine mesh strainers and you want to double up and you have no cheesecloth, you can do that. Um, and then using a glass measuring cup that has the pour spout is just going to make your life easier because what you're going to do is you're going to strain out the ghee from the pot into here. And then you're going to pour this into clean, dry glass jars. So really important that they are dry because any water on the lid or the jar could add moisture, like condensation even. Um, and if that gets into your ghee, then you run the risk of developing. You don't wanna have just made a bunch of ghee and then not be able to enjoy it. So um, I also am very lucky that my partner found this great pot that also has a pour spout. So if you have a pot with a pour spout and a Pyrex uh, measuring cup with a pour spout, then that is just going to make your life easier. Okay, I'm gonna show you one last step for like what these bubbles are looking like. You see how it's not the same kind of like creamy, really tight, foamy bubbles. And there's much bigger bubbles and it's like, there's more separation going on, right? So it's looking a lot more clear and translucent. And these like bigger bubbles that I'm seeing is great. So I am going to turn off the heat. All right, before my timer went off. So I'm gonna turn off the heat. So, and actually, um, I have heard from Indian friends and like read and learned that the milk solids at the bottom, if you're dairy sensitive, you will want to discard this. Okay. Um, but if you're not, I don't remember the name, but the milk solids that are cooked and at the bottom of the pan uh, can be used in place of butter when making roti. So it doesn't need to be discarded. And I think it also gets used in some like Indian sweet desserts. You can honestly just scoop it out of the pot and eat it with a spoon. It is delicious. I don't have problems digesting dairy, so I will not discard it. I will eat it. Um, I don't make ghee because I have problems digesting dairy. I make ghee because it is so nourishing and has so many like healthful benefits. I don't even think I talked about all of the healthful benefits. Um, so I'm just going to share a couple right now. I talked about how Ayurveda has a lot of importance on proper digestion. So ghee stokes your digestive fire or what we call Agni. Um, and that's really important. So it increases your digestive fire. Um, I mentioned already that it promotes better absorption of nutrients. 
it increases ojas and ojas um, in Sanskrit, there's no real, you know, one-to-one -one definition, but I would say that ojas translates to your overall life vitality, the like juiciness and vitality of your life. So it increases ojas, which is directly connected to your energy and your immunity and just your vitality. Um, I mentioned it's great for your gut and your colon. So it's really actually beneficial for leaky gut syndrome or people suffering from IBS or Crohn's disease um, or other just inflammatory intestinal disorders. Um, and because it's so great for your gut, it promotes healthy elimination. And so, um, you know, like whatever you're taking in, you wanna be able to absorb the nutrients and eliminate what you don't need. And right now it's fall season and there's a lot of people who are suffering from constipation because there's a lot of dryness in the air and dryness externally around us in the Northern hemisphere anyways. Um, and it really can help with uh, people who are suffering from constipation. It's just very lubricating. So it lubricates our insides, all of our vital tissues, um, but it can also be used externally to lubricate and moisturize um, in Ayurvedic practices, there will be, um, you know, medicated ghee that will be added to um, a dough dam called basti. Um, and literally, they will make a, a, a dough dam that goes around the eye um, that and warm uh, melted ghee uh, will be poured into this dam. And it's really great for uh, eye disorders. Um, it's also really great for your brain health and your nervous system because it is so penetrating. And I talked about how it has this like heavier quality. So energetically, it's also very grounding and helps for people who are suffering from like anxiety or nervousness, like overwhelm these sort of like very mobile, energetic, um, emotions of the mind and your, your mental space. Um, it also can reduce just general overall inflammation of the body and, um, and it's very great for people of the Vata and Pitta dosha. It is okay for Kappa, but again, if, um, you know, you're suffering and you're a Kappa who has things that are out of balance, um, it could exacerbate an existing issue, but, um, during the fall season specifically, um, ghee is really great for everybody to be including into their, into their diet, into their life. All right. Any other questions? Um, why, uh, why not skim off foam as it forms? Like, why do you have to wait? I think question. Um, I guess if you had like a little skimmer, you could, but you don't constantly want to be stirring it and disrupting it. Like, I mean, I would only get my wooden spoon in there to kind of push the foam aside to make sure that I'm not like burning any of the milk solids on the bottom. But I guess you could say that if you have something where you could like scoop it and skim it off, you could do it then. So that's, yeah, not an issue. So I don't think you can't, you know. Okay, now that it is off and there's no more bubbling, I'm gonna show you what it looks like again. So it's a nice golden color and this foam, you know, looks a lot different than the first stage, right? This foam is a lot like more yellow and earlier it was kind of like a pale creamy color. And there's some of these milk solids at the bottom here. So, I am going to strain it out. You can kind of see me do it. All right, so. See, we got a pot with the pour spout, so clutch. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just pour this.
Oh, and it smells so good. So traditionally, um, traditionally in, in Vedic culture, um, in Vedic culture stemming from India, ghee will be made on the full moon. And it is not a full moon right now, but this is just when class was scheduled. But um, ghee will be made on the full moon and it is said to carry the potency of what is happening astrologically. So I won't go into a whole Vedic astrology thing, but you know, people are most familiar with 12 constellations or 12 zodiac signs. Well, in um, Vedic astrology, those 12 get broken down even smaller into seven or 27, what they call nakshatras. And so the energy of the specific nakshatra that the moon is in on the full moon is like penetrated into the gi. And gi is also typically made um, whilst uh, chanting mantras. So there is a whole practice to making gi, which, you know, isn't something that I was diving into here today, but I did at least want to share that. If that's something that you're, you know, curious about, you can totally look up more information on full moon ghee and like specific mantras to chant to infuse the ghee because, you know, I talked about how it's just like a very powerful medicine. It's a superfood. It's really amazing and nourishing for everybody to eat at like you know, any time of day, all the time. And it gets used in um, Panchakarma, which is like a cleansing detoxification, typically like retreat that people do. Um, but it's interesting how it holds the, the qualities of being able uh, to nourish us very deeply while also being used during detoxification. Like that's how powerful ghee is. Um, so yeah. All right, I'm gonna show you the bottom of my pan after I've strained it out or my pot anyways. So you can, you can see that there's kind of like this golden colored light, lightish brown, you know, toasty milk solids. And those are all at the bottom. Um, I didn't burn it. We don't want it to be brown. So that look, looks just about right. And <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what this beautiful ghee looks like. Can you see how golden that is? Like, oh my gosh. And it's so like clear. So I'm gonna let that cool down a little bit um, <clears throat> before I pour it into my jars. So just the reminder, that you don't want to pour warm or hot ghee into your jar and then put the lid on because then you will form condensation on the lid. And if that condensation drips back into your ghee, you are very likely going to have moldy ghee. And that would be a total bummer. So that's why I'm going to let it cool a little bit in the, in the Pyrex. And then when it's like a little bit closer to room temperature, then I'll go ahead and put it in the jars and put the lids on and then just leave it on the counter and eat my little heart out. But yeah, it's as simple as that, right? We just got to chat a bunch. We didn't wanna walk too far away from the ghee cause it kind of like goes through these different phases of like the foaming, the size of the foam, the color, what sinks to the bottom. Um, so yeah, you kind of wanna keep an eye on it but it's not something you have to stand and stir. It's not risotto, um, but just, you know it's not a set it and forget it situation. So just keep that in mind when you're making ghee. Uh, there's one more question. Is each stick 250 grams? Um, question. GR grams. I no. So for the carry gold, I think this whole package, like when you buy the, a carry gold package, that would essentially be two sticks of butter and two sticks of butter, um, was 227 grams. Or wait, is a one ounce stick of butter, eight, sorry, is one stick of butter eight ounces? I don't do a lot of baking and I don't buy sticks of butter. I literally buy blocks of butter. butter so. And you keep it at room temp. And again, how long mm -hmm. does it keep? 
like months, years. And you keep it at room temp, right? Room temperature. I keep it on the counter. Like, don't, you know, put it like right next to where it's getting a lot of heat. I mean, it's probably fine, honestly. I mean, mine's nowhere near the sun. I guess I would also say probably don't like keep it near a window. Um, but yeah, the countertop is totally fine. You're likely going to eat it all within like at least a couple months. Yeah, I mean, if you're really worried about it, then stick the jar in the refrigerator, but honestly, like, it'll be fine. So yeah, uh, the two packages of Kerrygold, one package was 227 grams, um, made like about one and two thirds cup. So if that's, you know, helpful for anybody. So this is a 16 ounce mason jar or two cup mason jar. So that will all fit in here. And oh, another thing is always use a clean utensil so as to not contaminate your ghee. So don't you know, put your knife in, spread it on toast, lick your knife, get some more, like, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, we shouldn't do that anyways, but like, you know, maybe that seems to be okay with butter and you stick it back in the fridge, but you are going to want to use a clean utensil, clean, dry utensil each time you're getting into your ghee just to help preserve it and keep it like bacteria free. Awesome. Well, yeah. I just dropped a little note in there for you guys. Lots of thank yous in the chat to you, Chantal. Thank you guys so much. Um, if you guys have a minute, just read over my little note. It's just telling you um, <coughs> ways that you can support Fanning Tree Women's Collective. Since we are a nonprofit, um, you can donate as one of your options, or um, you can always shop on Amazon Smile. You have to actually go to, I think, amazon.smile or smile.amazon um, and you can choose us as your organization um, and then every time you shop a tiny little percentage of whatever you purchase goes to us um, so that's a really easy way to support us and then um, the most important way is to attend our events and even more important is to share get the word out help us grow help us build our community um, we have lots of events coming up. We have, uh, if you need some holiday gift ideas, we're going to do a DIY gift giving. Um, and then we have morning vinyasa the day after Thanksgiving for us in the States here. Um, learn all about the power of protein. We're going to learn how to make a healthy holiday meal, um, breath work classes, sound classes. So make sure you check out our events. Um, so let's go ahead and let's do our giveaway. I'm like, oh yeah, who's the winner? <laughs> let's get the wheel. I'm going to share. Get your digestion on. Yes. Everybody, are you super excited? Because everybody's so stoked about your spice blend. I love it. Yeah. I'm excited for everybody. Okay. So you should all see my fabulous wheel. <laughs> Here we Very go. Cool. Very Who's cool. gonna be? Wheel of names. Who's it gonna be? <coughs> it is. Oh my gosh! I thought it was, was Rosabel. Congratulations. Yes. Okay, so Rosabel, what do we need? Um, her address, right? So she needs mm -hmm. to send that to you, Chantal. So, yes. or you can send it to info at banyanwomen.org. Um, you should get a thank you. <coughs> um, you should get a thank you email and you can respond to that or you can send it to Chantal. Her info's there and then she'll get you your spices. Yay. Yeah. Congratulations. Hope you all enjoyed the class. Thank you so much. Yay. Wheel really fun. Yes, the wheel is so fun. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you all so much.
I hope you guys make ghee. If you guys do make ghee, please, please tag me on Instagram at Bonjour Belly. I would love to see that you guys made some of your own. And if you start cooking with it, and if you start baking with it or stirring it into your oatmeal or your matcha lattes, I'm excited for you guys to make your own ghee. Lots of thank yous. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, everybody have a wonderful night. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you.